This homework burst video focuses on the Gothic Horror homework booklet. When you had your red book, there were 16 tasks on the front cover. Today, this video is going to focus on helping you with task 11. Task 11 is a non-fiction writing task, writing to argue. It would be in your final exam, paper 2, question 5. Let's have a look at the question. Most people are selfish and only concerned with their own ambitions. They do not care about other people and the community. Write an article explaining your views about this statement. That's what we're going to try and do over the course of this help video. Your first thing to do is to decide what you think about the statement. Unless you decide what you think about the statement, your answer will be wishy-washy. We're going to take, eventually, a positive view on this, that actually people are quite nice. But initially, I want you to think about what your instinctive reaction is. Pause the video here, scribble down a line or two for yourself roughly, to make a decision, then unpause the video and on we go. Now I want you to look at how you express that. This becomes the core of your argument. You thought either one of two things, and there are two examples on the right hand side of this screen. People today are honest, decent, truthful and kind. It's wrong to judge them, and yet the stereotypes seem to hang around them like chains. Or, people today are a tarnished version of those who've come before. They lack the metal of the world wars, the struggles of economy, and their only experience of steel is through a games console. Humans are naturally selfish, and this new world is worse than the ones that have come before. You should pause the video here and write two sentences that really sharpen and explain what you thought a moment ago. Really crystallise your thoughts. Once you're done, unpause the video and on we go. We're now going to have a look at the overall structure for a piece of argumentative writing. You can move these around and your teachers will have given some of them different names, particularly in the middle where what you write depends on your argument. But the overall structure ought to be some sort of descriptive or metaphorical opening, more like a piece of creative writing than a piece of argument. You then want a single sentence paragraph, which might well be a rhetorical question. You then want to zoom out and show that you've got an understanding of the facts and the big picture of whatever it is you're arguing about. Then you zoom back in and look at the local impact. Sometimes it's appropriate to fast forward and say, well, what would happen if the issue was changed? Or what do we want instead? A sort of imagine the future paragraph. And then you want to draw it all back together into a final message. The rest of this video is going to take you through a positive spin on that statement and look at the whole thing in these sections. By the time you're finished, you will have the sketchy outline of a piece of writing, or if you've developed your ideas more fully, maybe a whole piece. Let's start here. Let's start with this homeless man on the left and then this person with a mirror for a face on the right. In this piece of descriptive opening, what I'm suggesting you want to try to do is start off with the idea that people look down on homeless people. Start off with quite a stereotypical couple of sentences describing a homeless person. Make it seem like they're different. Make it seem like they're something negative, grubby, unpleasant so that you can build on the idea that everyone is selfish. I then want you to flip it and say, well, actually, imagine that that person was you. Imagine that their face was a mirror and you're looking at them and you're seeing yourself. So let's have a look at how that might look with two sentences. I would say you probably want to set it up as a contrasting paragraph where two things happen in the middle. So a sim simple opening line, imagine a homeless person sitting on the street, then three sentences describing the homeless person, then flip it. Now, imagine their face was replaced by a mirror and go in as if you're now sympathetic. You're saying it's you. You understand that that's a person. You're describing them in, in a way that makes us feel sympathetic for them. I'm going to put the pictures back on now for a moment. And then once that's done, we should be able to move forward with the description. Pause the video, spend about five minutes developing this up and then unpause the video to move on. Once you've done that, let's go back to our overall structure. We now want some sort of rhetorical question to come in. I'm going to give you a few examples. You might focus in on, in tough times, would you rely on your neighbour? Hoping that your audience, your reader is going to say, yes, yes, actually I would. They're decent people. Are we really suggesting that you can't rely on anyone around you? That rhetorical question zooms in on the issue and pushes it a bit further. It's forcing people to decide whether if you take the statement to extremes we think everybody they know is selfish. This next one is longer. Now you're going to push some examples and say selfish. 
What about doctors, nurses, the fire service, shopkeepers, carers, and the many thousands of other jobs which put other people first? And obviously what you want your reader to see is that you can't just say everyone's selfish, that the blanket statement doesn't work. Or you can go straight in with a challenge. Why are we so quick to assume that other people are selfish? You should pause the video here and try and write your own rhetorical question that draws from the threads of your first paragraph and takes you into some facts in a minute. Once you're done, unpause the video. Now, we need to look at the idea of greed and selfishness. If we're saying self, people are selfish, we want to say actually selfishness is bad. So, on the screen now, you can see a series of words that connect to the idea of infection and disease. What I want you to do here is to write four sentences where you say selfishness is a disease. Selfishness is bad. It poisons and taints what it touches. It spreads like a germ, invisible and silent. If one person is selfish, other people catch it. Pause the video here, take four minutes, write something that builds up those four sentences around the metaphor of selfishness is like a disease. Then unpause the video. Now in the structure, we want to be looking at the idea of facts. So I've given you an opening sentence here. People fall into the trap of believing that everyone is selfish. However, in truth, across the country, charity is a powerful force. There are then five statements underneath, all of which are taken from recent charity statistics in the UK. And what they suggest is that actually the charity sector in the UK is doing really well. Pause the video here, try and create your own paragraph, and then once you unpause it, there's a waggle coming up next that you can have a look at and see how that's shaped up. Take about five minutes to do this. Pause the video here and unpause when you're done. Here's the waggle. Let's have a look at it. People fall into the trap of believing that everyone is selfish. However, in truth, across the country, charity is a powerful force. 760,000 people in this country are paid workers in the charity sector. They've chosen to dedicate their lives to helping others. UK charities earn around 39 billion a year, which means that people donate in significant quantities. That's at least three pound per person. Charities are worth more to the economy than the arts or farming. I've then left you a little gap to put some sort of statement in there that says, actually, if all this is true, people aren't selfish. People are good people. 44 million people in this country donate once a month and they give an average of 16 pound. This is not a selfish country. What I've done there with that last sentence is just draw it back to the question so it's not just a collection of random facts. Compare your waggle to what you wrote, then unpause the video and on we go. It might be worth at some point having a look at the idea that we like bad news. People love bad news. You could use this image to give you some stimulus for that. If you choose to do that, pause the video and then unpause and carry on. Now, it's important that if you're going to say people are not selfish, that you have some real local case studies to look at. So there are some on the screen now taken from the news in the last week. Pause it here. Have a read through it and then unpause, go on to the next one and keep the, some of these ideas in mind. The next one here gives you some more possible case studies. Here are the last two possible case studies that you might use to prove that people are basically decent. What you should do now is pause the video and write yourself a little paragraph where you take one, perhaps two, and explore them in more depth. So it's not a broad brushstroke fact paragraph. It's really zoomed in on an example of something good that shows that people are nice. A possible opening sentence you might use for that. Good news isn't rare. It's everywhere if you look, even in tough times. I want you to pause the video here, take five minutes and write your local impact paragraph. When you're done, unpause the video. It's worth looking at the idea that actually selfishness is what you make it. So here we're going to look at the idea of a mirror. I've used on the right an example about adventure sports because it's the sort of thing that exams might write about. But I want you to get to the idea that actually what you see is what you get. If you look for selfishness, you find selfishness. So, so here we go. Adventure sports are a mirror. They reflect the best part of ourselves back. If we're timid and afraid, they will show us danger and threat. If we're confident and cooperative and brave, they will show us a person who is stronger and more capable than we ever thought possible. I think you should be able to pause the video here and do the same for charity. That if we look for selfishness, we find it. If we look for goodness and charity, we also find it. Once you've had a go at that, unpause the video and on we go.
Your final couple of lines should be a message about how selfishness is bad, charity and helping people is good, and we believe that people are decent. So, on the screen you will see the idea of the metaphor of something lifting us, in this case charity or goodness. And you can see a collection of words here that you should use over the next two or three minutes to write yourself a little conclusion to your piece of writing. Pause the video here to write your conclusion, then unpause and you'll reach the end. You should have something that's ready to be a first draft of a decent piece of writing.